Well, this weekend saw a reckoning for Silicon Valley. And we know by now that whatever happens amongst the tech gods on the American West Coast has a big impact on all of us, on our social media, our data, our democracies, our elections, our voices and our lives. So when the richest man alive and separately, the hottest company in the valley both seem to be imploding at the same time. It is right that we should feel a little bit nervous. First, let's look at that drama at OpenAI. It's an $80 billion company seen as closest to building artificial general intelligence, which is tech that will change our lives forever. A colossal staff rebellion over the firing of college dropout turned billionaire superstar CEO and so-called Oppenheimer of artificial intelligence, Sam Altman, pushed out in a boardroom coup over the weekend. Claims he was sacked over fears he was keeping the true scale of the threats posed by AI secret from his company and investors. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. Now, over 500 OpenAI members are now calling for Sam Altman to return and threatening to leave the company after Microsoft snapped him and other exiles up a possible new front in their AI arms race. Meanwhile, let's get to that story in Silicon Valley. I mean, what story is complete without Elon Musk, eh? Incredible views of our super heavy booster. After an explosive weekend where the billionaire Starship rocket booster ended up in a ball of flames, he was quick to weigh in on the wild weekend at OpenAI, saying they wouldn't have removed Altman unless completely necessary. But could it have been a helpful distraction after Elon Musk endorsed an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory on his own social network? Now, this led multiple big-name advertisers to flee the burning wreck, which is X these days, formerly known as Twitter, of course. You've got Disney, Apple and IBM among some of those major companies that pulled money out of advertising on the platform. The thing is, though, and the question we're asking tonight, do people care enough about what these men are doing? A lot of them are sort of seen as rock stars to so their employees. They hold huge amounts, unbelievable amounts of power in a world that sort of seemingly bends to them. A small group of men controlling the platforms and algorithms that govern pretty much everything. Is it a good idea? Is it too late to do anything about it? Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by The Times Technology Business Editor Katie Prescott and Connor Leahy, who's Chief Executive of the AI firm Conjecture. Just the brains we need to talk to about this. Katie, I'll start with you. Look, uh, th there's been a lot to catch up on for people who maybe aren't abreast of open AI uh, and what it's doing. But in terms of where Sam Altman is, is he going to stay at Microsoft now? I mean, what does this all mean for the landscape of those companies? I've been describing this to people as like three episodes of or three series of succession over this weekend that's happened with this boardroom coup against Sam Altman. As you say, Microsoft poached him this morning, UK time to head up a new AI division, Microsoft being one of AI's biggest partners. Frankly, I mean, it's all conjecture and this story has so many twists and turns and changes all the time, but I can't see him now going back to open AI. There is this enormous dispute going on. I think more than 600 members out of 700 staff members have now signed a letter calling for everyone on the board to resign and to bring back Sam. But now he's been appointed into Microsoft, and I think he's gone through the pain of the last three days of up and down. I just, I just think it's very unlikely that, that he would go back to his old business. Let's, we'll, we'll go a bit more into the sort of business side of it. On the AI side, let's bring in Connor now. And, uh, you know, the way we like to do things on this show is to sometimes dive into quite complex topics, but this affects us all. So, so give us a sense of how seismic this was for the future of AI, what's happened over the weekend. So OpenAI is an extremely interesting company because in a sense, it is not actually a company. It is an extremely strange structure and in a sense, a very idealistic structure that was set up very early on as a nonprofit organization. And the primary reason that it is, was set up as a nonprofit organization originally was for the firmly held belief uh, that AGI, artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence is something that is achievable and will be achievable. And what is meant by this is really quite literally what, uh, what quite literally, to build something that's smarter than humans, that is mm. more powerful, so that they can transform everything and can potentially extinct the entire human species. This is the type of technology that we're dealing with here. This is something that the leading uh, minds in this field, such as Geoffrey Hinton, one of the greatest um, scientists to ever live in this field, himself agrees is absolutely possible and potentially imminent. 
So OpenAI was set up originally to have not, the, uh, not only at heart the uh, good of their investors, but also of humanity. Mm -hmm. It was set up as an organization to shepherd and to you know, build this technology for the good of humanity. And this is what this board really is. It's really tempting to think of this as a normal corporate board dispute, but this is not what happened. What happened is that this board was not a corporate board. It was the nonprofit board that would set atop of OpenAI, the company OpenAI, which had the goal, the stated mandate, that if the company would be doing something that goes against the safety of humanity in the development of artificial general intelligence, that they should be able to step in. Mm. And well, for reasons that we don't know, they seem to have thought that now was the time. Okay, well, let's talk about that, the reasons we don't know then, Katie, because they talked about a lack of transparency is what we do know of the communications from a Sam Altman. And we're hearing there about the safety levers that are in place to protect all of us as humankind. So clearly that was the thinking potentially. But if, if there are these issues about growing a business despite the safety risks of AI, isn't that just going to be done at Microsoft now rather than at OpenAI? I think that's right. I think Microsoft is actually the big winner out of all of this. Already a major investor in OpenAI, now it's poached its top talent. But I think we just don't know still what happened. That statement that the board put out was extraordinarily vague and actually was the main problem, I think, for, for the kind of catastrophe which blew up afterwards. Because saying the communications weren't consistent. What, is, what does that mean? I mean, all it meant was that Twitter blew up with, with various scandals and thoughts about what Sam Altman possibly might have done. And actually, we've seen one of the board members come out today who was behind the coup apologising mm. for what happened. The way they approached it, I think, was really, really poor. And when you're dealing with someone like Sam Altman with a fantastic reputation in Silicon Valley with great connections to politicians and business leaders, it was never going to be as straightforward as, right, we don't like you, you're out the door. Yeah, there had to be something more to it. I mean, but what is the lure of Sam Altman? Um, kind of, you've worked in the AI field for a very long time. It's quite a close community. I mean, is he seen as a sort of godlike figure? <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I must report, yes. <laughs> San Francisco is a very weird place, let me tell yeah. you. Um, San Francisco is a very weird place, and it is uh, a culture that has a lot of hero myth around mm founders around great CEOs, great engineers, and so on. And I'm not going to I'm not going to say here and not say that Sam Altman is not a fantastic CEO. He's extremely competent. He has an extremely impressive uh, track record in building really great companies. I know many people who work for him and speak very, very highly of him. Also, some people speak less highly of him, of course. Um, but, you know, got to crack some eggs if you want to make an omelet. <laughs> um, so he is seen as extremely, extremely competent. And he was the one who is seen to have now you know, spearheaded the um, development of the incredibly popular ChatGPT and GPT-4, which are some of the most advanced AI systems ever built, some of the most successful products ever built. And as a consequence of this, as having raised some of the largest rounds in terms of money ever. OK, I mean, that's a fairly, I'd say, even handed summary of a man. Uh, clearly, he knows what he's doing. He's in high demand. Katie described it as a coup that Microsoft got him. I mean, some people are saying this is basically like Satya Nadella of Microsoft basically staged an unbelievable steal. He got basically the, the, the founder of OpenAI, got him across to Microsoft on no money at all. I mean, what, where does this leave OpenAI? Will it survive? It's a, it's a fantastic question. And having seen how bizarre it's been over this weekend, uh, I, think, I think we're not sure. The speculation in Silicon Valley that other key founders could be brought in to sit on the board, people like Brian Chesky, the founder of Airbnb, Brett Taylor, um, who, who used to run Salesforce, that they've both been touted. I think we have to see what investors want to do. As Connor said, part of the issue here has been this tension on the board between the company's mission for humanity and for public good, but also raising the huge sums of money that Sam Altman did from the likes of Microsoft in order to grow this technology. It's incredibly power hungry. You need huge amounts of compute. It's very, very expensive to do. And it seems that it's that tension in the board structure that led to Sam Altman being pushed out. So I think that perhaps needs to be resolved in order for the business to move forward. Now, one of the things that's often raised with AI and the uh, sort of way it integrates with humanities, it's going to take millions of jobs. That's what a lot of the average person is concerned about. Sam Altman probably didn't think it was going to take his job one day. But when we think about the ethics of AI, Connor, I know that's something that your company currently is very, very concerned with. Talk to us a little bit about why it's so important to get the ethics right in AI. So there's a, there's a very funny interaction I had another day with a very well-meaning journalist who had no experience previously in the field of AI and especially AGI. 
and they asked me, what is the worst thing that could happen? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, humanity could go extinct. And they say, oh, by that, do you mean they'll take our jobs? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, nope, I am being extremely literal. And so are other founders of this field, uh, Jaffrey Hinton, godfather of AI, Joshua Bengio, or many other experts in this field, or Sam Altman himself. When he says lights out for humanity, he doesn't mean, oh no, we'll have an economic crisis. He means humanity will be dead. There will be no one left. If you make a system that is more competent than humanity, it's smarter, it's faster, it's better at politics, business, science, and you don't control it, which we don't know how to do, well, what do you think is going to happen? But isn't it fair to say there's a split in your community between people who believe in that philosophy and people who take quite the opposing view? Sure. There's many people who think climate change isn't real. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good comeback. Uh, you know, in terms of how you control it, then, you say we don't know if we're controlling it yet. Is it too late? Is the, the, the horse bolted? Not yet. I, I still see us alive here with jobs. Yeah. So I think we still have a little bit of time left, at least. But if we wait until the moment, where there is uh, something that is that powerful. A thing I like to say is there's only two times to react to an exponential, as we've learned with COVID, too early or too late. Mm. If we wait until we see systems that are more competent than humanity, that are general intelligence, it'll be too late. Then we can't stop it. So we have to act now. This is the exact kind of scenario where government has gotten. If we've learned one thing from this whole open AI, Sam Altman fiasco, is that if we, had, we had an organization which was truly set up with good altruistic intentions, for the good of humanity, completely face plant mm -hmm. when it's faced with reality and the incentives of the market. This is not how you can, we can regulate something this powerful with this powerful incentives. This is where we need government, where we need other people to step in. Do you have faith that governments will work together on this? We saw what happened with the pandemic. We didn't have much cooperation. Faith? No. I'm pessimistic for a reason, <laughs> but it is possible. It is possible for humanity to do great things. Mm -hmm. Many, many years ago, scientists, politicians, and others came together to talk about the concept of human cloning long before human cloning was even possible. And scientists reasonably understood that this would be extremely dangerous. This would have extreme, con uh, you know, extreme impact on, on our humanity, even, and you know, the future of our planet. And so they extremely wisely came together to make a premature moratorium before this technology existed. They say, OK, let's all wait. Let's take a breather. Let's you know, not work on human cloning for a while until we figured out the ethical and the regulatory frameworks necessary so we can develop this technology safely. This is what needs to happen, and it needs to happen fast. Um, Katie, we're going to keep you for the next segment of the show. We're going to talk about Elon Musk, but just briefly before we head to break, were you surprised that he waded in on this topic at all today? Not at all. He was one of the co-founders of OpenAI, so he's very, very interested in the company and in everything that goes on in Silicon Valley. Um, and, and so I wasn't, I can't say I was surprised that, that he piped up. And actually, I was surprised he didn't come back sooner. <laughs>